How are y'all doing today? Good. We're, we're excited to welcome you in the house today. We're excited for the, the service, and uh, we're just going to go ahead and wish you an early Merry Christmas, you know. It's, we're excited for the Christmas season. We're excited for everything that, uh, that it represents and everything that Jesus has done for us. Like, it's, uh, it's, it's awesome. I'm excited for it. And we finally have some a little bit of December weather this morning. Um, and so my kids on the way to church said, Mommy, is that snow? I said, no, it's just frost. And so um, it's feeling a little bit like Christmas. Um, but don't get your hopes up because it's going to warm up, thank God. Um, but, yes, welcome. We're so glad that you're worshiping with us this morning. It's going to be an awesome, awesome day. And just one quick announcement on uh, December 26th and January 2nd, it's, the, it's the, la the last service of this year and the first service of next year. We're going to be doing an online service that way for everybody traveling and stuff. It'll make, it make, it'll make things easier for y'all. You don't have to worry about rushing and having, the, having a hectic uh, 14 Christmases on Christmas Day and then, then worrying about getting here. We're going to push it online and watching you do time. We're going to bring Christmas to your house and your living room. You can watch it in your PJs, however you want to watch it. It, it'll be cool. It'll be good, and we're excited because God has something for those services, too, because uh, anytime the Word is presented, God's going to touch somebody's heart. Yeah, it's kind of bringing us back to our uh, COVID days, huh, when we were online for a couple of months. So, yeah, so make sure you um, join us with your family. It's gonna, those services are going to be great. Um, and so we also want to remind you that uh, this Wednesday will be our only prayer service till the rest of the year. <laughs> and so um, this Wednesday we will be having our prayer service from 6.30 to 7.30. And so um, we just invite you to come to that as well. Um, we're going to get ready to go into a time of worship and just prepare our hearts, but um, there are some things that I feel like that we need to pray for as, as a church, because there are people in our church that, um, that really need prayer and that are struggling, and so we together, if we could all just stand and kind of just um, prepare our hearts for what God has for us today and, and the way that he wants to take the service, but um, we're going to call out the name Barb Burrow. Because she, she needs prayer, and she needs the Lord to touch her body. And you know what the Bible says, when two or three are more in agreement, then God's going to show up. And there's more than two or three people here, and I believe that there's more than two or three people that are in agreement that God is going to move. And so we're going to call out her name. We're gonna, we are going to plead heaven on, the ha on behalf of Barb's name, because we know that we serve a God who is a miracle working God. We know that he's not done and we know that he loves to answer his kids' prayers. We know that he, he set the stars in the sky. He sent a little baby to become the savior of the world. And it wasn't something that, that people expected. They did not expect Jesus. He came and he turned the world upside down. He turned people's thinking upside down. And so I challenge us today, let your faith run wild as we call on, on um, we, as we plead heaven for Barb today, because God can touch her body right where she's at. God can, he can move. He can hear us. And then just a couple miles down the road, he can touch her body. And that's what we believe. We believe that, that we are going to hear from Jim and he's going to say, man, I don't know what happened, but Barb is, she's different. She's different. And so um, we don't normally do this. We don't normally do this, but we feel very heavily that we should do this today. And um, 
And so let's, let's do it. Let's, let's pray for Barb. God, we thank you that you are the miracle-working God. Lord, we thank you that you, you do things that we, that, that we can't even fathom and comprehend. God, we thank you that you right now want to touch Barb's life, God, that you want to touch her body. And Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Barb, you be healed right now. In the name of Jesus, let the healing flow through her body, from her head to the top of her feet. We rebuke anything that is coming against her body. And I pray for a heavenly strength to enter her body. I pray right now that the King of Kings will, will touch her body, will leave heaven and touch her body in that room where she is at right now. God, I thank you that you are a miracle working God. God, I thank you that you you prove so often to us through your word that you want to heal. That God, all we have to do is ask and it will be done. And so God, we are asking today as a church that you would touch Barb's body. God, we believe that there is a miracle laying in that bed right now. God, that we believe that there is a miracle that is going to come out of today as we plead heaven, Lord. We thank you for what you're going to do in this service, God. We thank you for the doors that you're going to open for people this week. God, we thank you for, for the, the things that you're going to speak to us and the lives that are going to be changed. In the name of Jesus, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the one that is coming. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for who you are and what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's worship.
tell all the world we have a Savior, that we have a Savior.
us. He's here to, to break chains. That's not something we sing about. That's just not something we talk about. That's who he is. I, I, I don't know each of your stories this week or this month or this year, but I do know this, that God, King of all glory, Jesus is here to meet you. He's Emmanuel, God with us. Father, I just speak to every stronghold that is coming against this body of believers, whether they're watching online or in person. Every discouraging thought I rebuke, every lie of the enemy I rebuke, every false narrative that's played its way out in our thinking this week I rebuke. And Father, I ask that your Holy Spirit will do a work today. Do a work in our mind today not tomorrow. Lord, we need it tomorrow, but right now, Lord, I ask that we walk out of this place, walk out of this space and time different because we've engaged with God. Lord, now I pray that your word that is so anointed will penetrate every heart that hears it. I pray that my my feeble and finite way of communicating will will uh, just lay at your feet and you use me because my words aren't anointed but I know Jesus that you are so I need your anointing today that we walk out of here changed by who you are in the mighty name of Jesus I pray amen you may be seated it's a good day It's a good day. I don't have a joke. I'm sorry. It was the last thing on my mind. I don't need a joke with this guy up on stage. Oh, that is, that was cruel. That I shouldn't have said that. Oh man. We're continuing in a series called The Five Love Languages of God. And we've been taking and looking at these love languages and overlaying it to the Christmas narrative, the Christmas story of how Christ came. And today, I, I get to speak about quality time. Quality time. And this is one of those love languages that falls right in the middle. If I had to rank love languages in my life, physical touch, words of affirmation, quality time would be like the third one. And I think quality time for Amy and I, are like the the third one in general as well. And really, when you think about quality time, quality time is just kind of being present, being there. Uh, It doesn't have to be, you don't have to do something special. You don't have to, like, always make sure everyone's entertained. But quality time is just like, you, you literally could just be in the same room with someone and just be present for them. And you can have quality time. And I've always heard this argument where, well, quality time beats quantity time, or quantity time beats quality time. And I would argue it's both. Because I, I will say this. I, I, think, I think quality time, you need to have quantity to have quality sometimes. But I've, I flew from Atlanta, Georgia, to South Africa, crammed in a plane like this, there was a lot of quantity time, but it wasn't quality time. And uh, quality time is being present, wanting people there. And I'll, I'm going to give you an example of what quality time looks like real quick. I took this the week of Thanksgiving. Um, if you could throw it up there. Or not. Is a picture of my dad and my son, and they are looking for an oil leak. Obviously, my son has no idea what he's doing, and my dad barely knows what he's doing. So 
I'm just joking. My dad has forgot more about cars than I'll ever know. But the, the reality is that was quality time because my son just wanted to be with his papa. And my papa, or my dad, wanted my son present. My, my, my son wanted to be in my dad's presence. And my, my dad wanted my son present. And so that was quality time. And, and it wasn't like my dad was doing, like, like don't, don't get me wrong, he wrestled and played with them, but, like, they were just together. And I, I think sometimes we can overcomplicate this, but today we're, we're going to hit on God's quality time and what it looks like. So we're going we're, we're gonna to answer a how, why, and a how. How did God walk out quality time and is still walking out quality time? Why did God walk out quality time, the love language of quality time, and how do we? So I'm going to look at three short sections of scripture. Matthew chapter 1, 18 through 25, Galatians 4, 4 through 7, and Philippians 2, 1 through 11. And we're going to, we're going to run through this real quick. And so let's go to, let's go to Matthew. This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her fiancé, was a good man and did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. If you're wondering if this sounds familiar, well, it hasn't changed in 2,000 years, so you probably read it multiple times. Also, um, Pastor Emily shared it last week. Um, as she considered this, and as as he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, "Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people." From their sins. All this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife. But he did not have sexual relations with her until her son was born. And Joseph named him Jesus. So that honestly is how the quality time between God and humanity started, I would argue. Jesus stepped in to humanity to spend quality time. And it was just up on the screen, but at the right time, God sent Jesus to spend time in time for all time. I know that's a tongue twister, and that's okay, but think about it. At the right time, God sent Jesus to spend time in time for all time. God knows how to operate perfectly. In every love language, because God, love isn't something he does, that's who he is. Quality time is just one aspect of this thing we call love and how to display it. So the second set of scripture is found in Galatians, and we're going to read it real quick. And this answers the why. But when the right time came, some translations would say, in the fullness of time, God sent his son born of a woman, subject to the law. And, and just to give clarity, that the law that he's talking about is the law of Moses, and it, it's how the Jews try to gain righteousness with God, try to get a right relationship with God. And the reality is, you can't. The law is good because it points out all of our sin. Like, we would not know what sin is if it wasn't for the law. So we need the law but the law does not offer any help into walking in freedom from sin. That's where Jesus steps in. 
he was subject to the law, and he set us free from the law so that we can walk in freedom from the law and from sin. And so, but when the right time came, so God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law. We were in this grind trying to get to God, trying to work our way towards him. That's what the law really at the root is. So that he could adopt us. The why? So that he could adopt us as his very own children. And because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out, Abba, Father. That's such a, a that, that, that's like, it's a loose translation, but that's like the equivalent of my children saying, Dada. It's like the, the purest, dearest form of communion between a child and a father. Now, you are no longer a slave, but God's own child. And since you are his child, God has made you his heir. Ooh, that's pretty awesome. That answers the why. Why did God, why did God choose to walk out this love language quality time? Because God wanted to adopt us. And then the third section of scripture we're going to tackle real quick and and, and I, I want to get them all out the way, then we're going to talk about them. So I need you guys to memorize all this stuff. Is there any encouragement? So Paul is the author of Galatians and Philippians. But he says, is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Any comfort from his love? Any fellowship together in the spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together with one mind and purpose. Oh, that's hard. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. Thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interest, but take, some translations say, take a genuine interest in others too. In verse 5, he drops this bomb. You must. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. A must isn't an option. A must isn't an option. If we're to walk and navigate this world, this is the how. How do we walk out quality time? How do we walk out love in a world that tends to hate us as followers of Christ? We love them even though they hate us because God loves us. And he says this, you must have the same attitude as Christ. This is not an option. This is not like, hey, you should think about this if you're not busy. This is like, you, this is a must. And then he explains Jesus, what Jesus did in walking out this love language and what he modeled. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being when he appeared in human form. He humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, whenever the Bible says therefore, you got to ask yourself what it's there for. It's actually a really good study technique. Um, because he did that, because he humbled himself, the Bible says God opposes the proud. He gives grace to the humble. It, he humbled himself. God, of all glory, humbled himself. Therefore, God 
elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all names, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Christ Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So this love language, quality time, we answered how did God walk it out? Why did he walk it out? And how do we walk it out? And that's, that's what we're going to talk about, these, these overflows, this, this quality time. So the first thought I really want to I want to give you in, in discussing how, why, and how is God is with us. God is with us. How did God walk out quality time with us? Well, it started with 33 years, him being born, we read it in Matthew, to a virgin. He stepped into humanity. He lowered himself because he wanted communion with us. And this was his plan from the beginning. God has always wanted quality time with his creation. From from Genesis through Revelation, it's been this narrative of God getting to us. Of God trying to get us to him. It's been this beautiful narrative of, of Jesus redeeming us to the proper relationship that we should have. Putting us into the right category. Emmanuel, the angel told Joseph, he will be called Emmanuel. This is actually not his name. This is his position. The angel told Joseph to name him Jesus, Yeshua. Yeshua means Joshua. It's actually a really common name. But Jehovah Joshua, or Yahweh Joshua, that means God, my Savior. That's his name. That's who he is. Emmanuel is a position that he took when he stepped in. God with us. God with us. Every religion on earth, Islam, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Taoism, and the, the, all the oriental mergings of those last isms. All of them have one thing in common. It's this need to try to get to God. If I live a good enough life, if I pray so many times a day, if I, if I make my trip to Mecca, if, 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 I, if I bow down, if I'm kind to people, it's this work. If I follow the, the law, if you're a Jew, if, if, I, if I follow the law perfectly, somehow I might get righteousness. But it all falls short because human effort in its own place, it can't work. And it will never work. That's why Jesus, Christianity, is set apart. Because Jesus, God, he saw our striving to get to him and he said they can't. So from before time began, Christ was crucified. God's like, I'm going to set the world perfect. But I know sin's going to enter it. But I just want you to know, Jesus, before I lay the foundations of the earth, you are going to have to die for them one day to make things right. And that was God's plan all the time, was communion, this quality time with us. So God became man. He stepped into humanity to become man, to have quality time with us. And I love this because if it was me, I would have showed up on Passover weekend, and I would have been like, I'm going to die for their sins get it done in three days, and go back to heaven. I don't want to be there that long. Just make a weekend trip of it. But God, he's like, no, I want to associate with my creation. I want to know. I want to be present with them. So I I, I need us to understand what Jesus did. God Stepped into time. God, infinite, eternal, omnipotent, God of all glory, stepped into finite, stepped into time, felt the effects of his creation for the first time when he became a baby. He got cold. 
He had to have his diapers changed. He needed. God needed. He spent quality time with his creation. So when you're going through it, when you're going through it, you have a God who knows. You have a God who bleeds. You have a God who weeps. You have someone that knows exactly. If no one else in your world understands what you're going through, God came and spent quality time with his creation so you can know, so you can know that he is with you. Emmanuel, God with you. And the last thing that Jesus said before he ascended to heaven, after he died for our sins, God rose him to set us free from the power of sin. All we have to do is believe that he's the son of God, believe that he died on the cross, believe that he rose from the dead. He says this in the Great Commission. In Matthew 28, 20. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given them. And and I want you to read this. What does that say? And be sure of this. I am with you always. Say it again. And be sure of this. So he stepped into humanity for 33 years to know what we go through. To stub his toe. To know what it feels like to want to say everything in your head even though you shouldn't when you stub your toe or step on that Lego. God knows. God knows what it feels like to lose a loved one. God knows. God knows what it feels like not to have anything. Like the, Someone asked Jesus, what should we do to follow you? And, and Jesus says, know this, the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Jesus wasn't even loaded. King of all kings, Lord of all lords. He wasn't, he wasn't like rolling and he just trusted God for everything and, and like he knows what it, what, it, what it means to have need. He knows what it, what it means to be hungry. He knows what it means to, to not sleep. He knows what it means. And he ends his time on earth in a physical body with the statement, and be sure of this, I'm with you always. He, when, when he ascended to heaven, he didn't just leave us he, he said, no, I'm with you. Now I'm with you forever and always. I'm with you. And be sure of this. And, and when I was writing this, man, the Lord just really laid this on my heart. I'm going to read it. Someone needs to hear this today. God is present in your life right now. You've been feeling and thinking, where is God? You have even quoted the scripture that we just read And be sure of this, I'm with you always. And you've been saying, God, where are you? You said you're with me. You feel abandoned and alone. I am here to tell you that God is present. He sees you and not once in the last few months when you have felt so alone has God forgotten you. He has not left you or walked out on you. You need to hear this. Satan is a liar. He is a liar. Quit listening to him. He has lied to you. But I am here to tell you. Open your eyes. God is present. Emmanuel will not and cannot leave you. God is with us. And why did God step into humanity to walk out this love language of quality time? Because God adopted us. When the right time came, God sent his son to pay our price, to set us free from the law, to set us free from the power of sin and death so that we could be heirs. Romans 8 says co-heirs. God adopted us. 
It's quality time that builds the relationship. This is so important. It's quality time. God, and, and when we think of the word adopted, we get a skewed view because we only think of it through the lens of like our culture. But in Roman times, adoption was so much greater because traditionally, Roman, Ro- wealthy Roman families are what normally adopted, and it wasn't children that they adopted. What happened was, in Roman times, when, when the author, Paul, wrote this letter, they had a clear understanding that adoption was very, very significant. And what would happen is, like a wealthy landowner that wouldn't have an heir, or his, his actual kids are just bums and they, they're, they, they stink, um, he would go out and find someone who would be a good steward of what he's leaving behind, and he would adopt them. And it would be an adult. And when, when, when a, an adult got adopted in Roman times, they actually had more legal rights than an actual born child because the father would choose the adoptee. And what would happen is their identity would 100% change. So when a Roman would adopt someone, the the adopted person, they would no longer associate with their old life. They would get a completely new identity. And not only that, they would have full rights, if not more rights, to any other heirs. Because the father chose them. And to the government, they would be it was as if that child was born into that family. It was not like a, a Roman would never say, this is my adopted son. He would never distinguish between the two. He would say, this is my son. He's a full heir. And so when, when Paul is talking about adoption and being an heir of God, there is weight to this. Because God... He spent quality time with us, and he still spends quality time with us to build a relationship that provokes this thing that Paul says. He he puts his spirit in us so that we might say, Abba. He wants a relationship, not like some distant God that that keeps a distance and and doesn't know. he, He wants to get down. When I play with my kid, I limit myself. When I wrestle with my son, he's He's three. And there, I, I know one day that he might kill me. I understand that. I've, I've come to grips with that because my son is three. He hits like a man, and we wrestle. But when I, I saw a sign the other day in Hobby Lobby. It says, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, except for bears. Bears will definitely care, kill you. Well, that's ironic because I call my son Bear Bear, and I thought that makes sense. Um, but when we wrestle, I limit my strength. I get down on his level. I I, I lower myself to build a relationship with him. He, he's Superman and I'm the Hulk and he has a Hulk costume and he flies at me and punches me and I fly backwards and I roll and he pops my ribs out of joint all the time. I have a great chiropractor because he keeps me playing with my kids. But I, I lower myself and that's what God did to build this relationship, quality time. And just, just for the chance that we might say Abba one day, just for the chance that we might call out to him in a relationship, just for the chance that he can reconcile us to a relationship with him, he spent quality time so that he could adopt us. I remember when my kids were little, both my children said Dada first. And I remember Amy being bummed each time that they said Dada, and and I was like, Amy's like, man, I wish they would have said Mom, Mama first, and and I'm like, I don't know, honey, I, I don't know why they said Dada first, and but what she didn't see is when she was gone, I was like, da 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 da. I mean, like I was right in front of their face, da 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 da. Daddy loves you, da 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 loves you, dad dad da 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 da. You know, like I, I was just going crazy, but like, but where she gets me though is. They said dad, dad once when they were less than a year old. And 
Sky wasn't as long. She started saying it more frequently, but Peyton said it once. When he was like, I don't know, seven months old, he said, Dada. And then he, like, the next day he started going, ma, 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 It was just gross. It was nasty. And he just, then he wouldn't, and there for the longest time, for months, he called me man. He wouldn't, he wouldn't say Dada. He wouldn't say Daddy. And I had to wait, like, over, like, almost 18 months to hear my son say Dada again. And I would, I would be saying, Dada loves you. Dada, can you say Dada? Come on, bud, say Dada. He's like, Mama. I'm like, boy, Mama, I'm Mama. He'd say, Sissy. He said, Papa. He said, Nana, before he would say Dada. And it was like, honestly, as a father, I just wanted him to hear it because I loved him so much. And one day in 2020, is August 2020, I got home. And he just started busting out. And I actually have this on video right after it happened. And I want, I want you guys to see this real quick. So, guys, I walked in today and Peyton came around the corner like a bat out of heaven. And he came saying, Dada, Dada, can you say it for the camera? Yeah, just like that. And it just made my day. My day is literally made. That was the best thing. And then he gave me smooches like this. Smooches? Come on. <gasps> yeah, there it is. He's just my little guy. And he just started busting out Dada like out of nowhere. So I had to wait and wait and wait. And I show that because it's quality time that cultivated that that it didn't just happen my son do, didn't just run up to runs up to strangers and kiss them or run up to people and call them dada and god stepped in humanity for quality time with us and if i feel that joy when my son just starts calling me by my name imagine the joy our heavenly father feels when we come in line with what, what he wants to do, we allow him to reconcile us to the right category because the right category for our life is a child of God and start crying out, Dada, Abba, that's my father. God's quality time shows us that God calls us his kids long before we ever call him dad. God's quality time shows us that he put identity on you before you recognize the identity, his identity for you. God's quality time shows that he put identity on you before you recognized his identity for you. He calls you his. Peyton was my son long before he called me Dada. He was mine. It just took him time to realize it. I recognized him as mine from before. He was created, and, and the same is true for you. God is with us, and God has adopted you. And, and uh, th there's so often a tension in people's lives about this relationship we have with God as our father. They have a father when maybe your dad dropped the ball and, and he was just awful or you just haven't had that. But God is not that. God loves you. His first response is always love and grace because God loves you and he longs to hear you say, Dad, Dad. And the last thing, so we, God's quality time, he stepped into humanity, not just for 33 years, but so that we could have quality time with him forever. I'm with you always. That's how we did it, through the cross and through the resurrection, through the virgin birth. Then 
then the why of why, how he did it is he wanted to adopt us. And, and the last thing, like God showed us. He showed us how to walk out this love language through his life. And, and I think the crux is really what Paul, the author of Philippians, he's writing to the church at Philippi, is hitting on. He is hitting the human tendencies to think of self. He's, he's smacking them right in the face because he knows how the human mind works. And, and if we're in relationship with God and we are calling him Father, but we're, we're a, the, honestly, it's human tendency to think my idea is better than your idea. It's human tendency to, to, to think, well, I'm, I'm better than you. And, and it's not, and, and there, there could be any number of external factors that play into that. It's human tendency to think of yourself better than someone else. It's human tendency to not want to work well together. And Paul is addressing this, and he's saying, you, you as a follower of Christ, if you want to walk out the love that God has for you, especially in quality time, because get this, if someone is always thinking, I'm better than everyone else, if you have to spend time with that person, I guarantee you it's not going to be quality time. It's going to be miserable time. You're going to be like, oh, great. No one's going to want to be around you, number one. Number two, how are you going to show the love of God to the world if you're constantly thinking this way? So Paul is hitting on this. And I'm not going to muddy the water. I'm just going to read it real quick. I'm going to read it back to you. Verses one through four. Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Any comfort? From his love, any fellowship from um, together in his spirit, are your hearts tender and compassionate? Then make me truly happy by wholeheartedly agreeing with each other, loving one another, and working together with one mind and one purpose. I, I want you to see this. Joy and happiness actually comes out in the body of Christ when we agree with one another, when we work together when we have a spirit of unity and honestly if God's put his spirit in you God's put his spirit in me there should be a spirit of unity because God's spirit never brings dissension so there's dissension within the body that means suddenly somewhere along the way we're starting to think about ourselves more than we are other people and so he's saying this should bring like this should bring True happiness. And then he says this. Don't be selfish. Really, what is selfishness? Thinking of yourself first, right? I'm, I'm, I'm going to think about me. Me, I'm going I'm to look out for numero uno. Don't try to impress others. So he said, don't be selfish. And when you're thinking about yourself all the time, you're always wanting to look good, right? You, you, don't, want, you don't want to have a hair out of place. You, 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 you don't want to look like, oh, you, you want to look all the time like you have it all together. And Paul's saying, man, that's a, that's a pointless life. That's going to beat you up. Don't try to impress others. Don't even try. Be humble. At the end of the day, what is humility? Humility is having a right look at who you are. It's not thinking of yourself too high, not thinking of yourself too low. It's thinking, this is who I am. This is what God says about me. And coming into agreement with what God says about you. Be humble. Thinking of others as better than yourselves. Oh. 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 Are you, are, you, are you serious, God? This is how you walk out quality time? This is how you walk out this love language? Thinking of others as better than yourself? Well, what, well, what if they're really not better? I, I think, honestly, we, we, I mean, dude, I wrestle with this. But he says, don't look out only for your own interest. He's not saying don't. Don't take care of your own interests, he said, but, but take an interest in others too. 
Man, these are powerhouse verses for walking. How do we walk out quality time? Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Think of others. Be humble. I mean, like, that's hard. But I, I think the, what, what Paul's saying, if you're really having a hard time with this, if you're really having a hard time reconciling this to your walk with God, I need you to look at the next verse. That's why I think he threw it in there. Because he's saying, you must have the same attitude as Christ. So you're having a hard time in humility when God became man? You're telling me you can't think of yourself as less than someone else when God, God eternal, God omnipotent made himself a slave? So, so it's almost like Paul saying, tell me again how you feel entitled. Tell me again your entitlement. Tell me again why you can't. He said, you must have the same attitude as Christ. Jesus, the two greatest sacrifices the world has ever seen. Number one, being when he laid his life down on the cross for our sin. Number two, to close second, when he stepped off of his throne into a manger. Infinite became finite. Our brains can't even wrap our understanding around the sacrifice that God made to spend quality time with us. So Paul's saying, if you feel entitled, if you're having a hard time in humility, if you're having a hard time thinking of others better than yourself, today, or any day for that matter, I need you, myself included, to take a long, hard stare at Jesus. That's what Paul says to do. You must have the same attitude as Christ. Take a long, hard stare at what Jesus did for you and how he modeled this love language, quality time. Though he was God, he did not think equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges, his divinity. He took the humble position of a slave and was born a human being when he appeared in human form. He humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names. That at the name of Jesus, man, there's power, there's weight in the name of Jesus. Every knee should bow and every tongue confess that he is in the Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Quality time, all, all love, loving people takes humility. It does. It's lowering yourself, but I, I see this one because you're there. You're present when you're spending quality time with someone. That, that's, that's an increase in humility. And if we want to, in, in 2022, if we want to keep moving forward with God, we got to make sure that humility and love is first and foremost. You don't have to have it all together. You don't have to make sure everything is just right to walk this love language out. You just got to be there. You got to be present. Look at Christ. God with us, Emmanuel. And I believe there is an opportunity here. If you're listening online or if you're here in person, there's an opportunity here today because God wants to adopt you. If you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, You've heard it. It's so simple today. God is here to adopt you. Christmas, quality time, the whole Christmas season is about one point, the cross, that Jesus paid for our debt to God that we might have a relationship with him because God wants to adopt you because he wants to spend quality time with you now and for eternity because he loves you. And it's so simple. It really is. 
It's, Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. Forgive me of my sins. I believe that you died on the cross for my sin. That your cross was enough to pay it all. And I believe that God rose you from the dead to set me free from the power of sin and death. God didn't make it complicated because he loves you. He wants a relationship with you. He wants quality time with you. He wants you to call him Abba. If you're here today, we're going to have an opportunity in just a moment to respond. And if you're watching online, please go to c1.church. Go to the bottom and say, contact us and say, I, I, I accept Christ. Maybe you're here today and you fit into another category and you say, I just need to take a long, hard look at my Savior because I'm having a really hard time humbling myself. I'm having a really hard time thinking of others better than me. And we're about to launch into Christmas where families get together and you're forced to spend time together, so it might as well be quality time. And we have an opportunity to walk out this quality time that God modeled and, and, and in this, because I promise you that people are gonna have family come into town that don't know Jesus. What better way to show them Jesus than by love? Romans 2 says, it's God's loving kindness that draws us to repentance. And imagine if you were able just to love through this simple act of quality time and they see Jesus and they, they repent. You can plant seeds, but you can't do that by thinking you're better than anyone. You can't do that without humility. You can't do that without Jesus. So what I want us to do is let's stand. And how we're going to respond is if you need Jesus, you need to make him Lord of your life. I'm going to be up here, Andy, if you could be up here. And um, if you need prayer and you say, I need Jesus to be Lord of my life, I need to, I, I, I just need to confess and believe in him. Uh, we're going to be up here. We want, we want to, we want to make that introduction. We want to, we, we want to celebrate with you that you, that you're about to say Abba, that, that God's going to put, uh, he's going to make you his son or daughter because he wants to adopt you. Or maybe you're here and you just say, I just need prayer. I'm really struggling this season to, 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 to walk out humility. I'm really struggling. We're up here to pray with you. Or, or maybe you just need to take and just stand and worship and humble yourself. And quit thinking of yourself the way you've been thinking of yourself, whether it be too low or too high. If you're thinking of yourself too low, well, I'm not worthy, quit, stop that. That's not from God. You're a son of, or child or daughter of God. If you're thinking of yourself too high, stop that. Because if God humbles you, you're not going to like it. Just be humble. Have a right understanding. What does God say about you? He says you're his. But as, as Pastor Ben begins to lead, I would like you to respond. What I don't want to happen is if the Holy Spirit is saying you need to go up for prayer or you need to go bow and just pray, whatever he's leading you to do, what I don't want you to do is listen to fear. Fear says, don't go, stop. Don't, what will people think? Like, don't listen to that. Listen to the Holy Spirit and respond accordingly. As Pastor Ben leads, let's respond. been given the king of our freedom sing for the light has come this is Christmas come and adore him bring gifts before to the world we're 
worship the sun This is Christmas This is Jesus Emmanuel Here with us Tell all the world We have a Savior We have a Savior And we are no longer lost Cause He Come down for us We have a Savior We have a Savior Sing with the angels Lift up your voices Join in the song of hope This is Christmas Oh Jesus This is Jesus Emmanuel Here with us Tell all the world We have a Savior We have a Savior And we Come down for us We have a Savior We have a Savior His love will reign forever His love will reign forever His love will reign God, that that you search for us, Lord, that we are not lost, that there is not a day that goes by, there's not a minute, there's not a second that goes by that you don't think about us, that you don't try to continually get to us, God, that, that we can we can come to you knowing that you are our Father, you are our Abba Father, the one that loves us, that created us, that has has good things for us, God, and I pray right now that as we go about our week, as we go about our uh, whatever this week may bring, that you'll remind us that you are with us, that you are here for us, and as we celebrate your your son's birth, and, and so we celebrate what all it means to have a Savior born, God, I pray that we would not forget that. Thank you, Lord, for the word that was spoken. God, I thank you that it's going to be um, planted deep down inside of us this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week. We'll see you Wednesday.